Good afternoon. I'm Linda Spiegel, president of the Beverly Hills Bar Foundation. The foundation was honored to be asked to serve in this innovative endeavor to bring what was an IRL settlement program to virtual reality. The Beverly Hills Bar Foundation and the BHBA always stand ready to assist the judicial system and our plaintiff and defense colleagues. We have every expectation that this program will prove to be as if not more effective than ever before to bring the enormity of PI matters on the LASC docket down to manageable levels. Thank you to everyone who worked so diligently to get this virtual program up and running so quickly, including the executive director of the Beverly Hills Bar Foundation, Belinda McCauley, Kala, ASC, DC, and LA Labada. In particular, today's speakers, Jeannie Harrison, president of Kala, Marta Alcumbrak, president-elect of ASCDC, and Chris Almez from LA Abada. They're a wonderful example of opposing counsel working collaboratively. Thank you also to all volunteer settlement officers who are really the engines who will keep this train running on time. And now it's my distinct honor to introduce the four judges who are here today to tell you all about Resolve Law LA. I could take the full hour extolling the credentials of this panel, but for time and expediency considerations, I humbly present presiding judge of the LA Superior Court, Eric Taylor, supervising judge of the Civil Division, David Cowan, MSC Unit Judge, Delilah Corral Lyons, and PI Hub Judge, Daniel Crowley. Thank you so much for being here and for your leadership of this great program in which the Beverly Hills Bar Foundation is proud to be a partner. Judge Taylor, the floor is yours. Thank you, Linda. Thank you so much. And it, it is such a pleasure to be here. And it's so great to see all the enthusiasm as the numbers grow and the attendees at this point. And uh, I'm, I, I couldn't be happier to be here as we start to rise from the ashes like the Phoenix and uh, to this new day of open courts, uh, as you may know, I'm sure a lot of you do know, uh, we've uh, eliminated the social uh, distancing uh, practices in our court in line with, with Cal OSHA and, the, and our local health authorities and state health authorities, et cetera. Uh, it, it took us only a week to, to figure out how we do that and to take the signs down in our, in our courthouses. Uh, masks are still required. However, um, as part of what we uh, examined with respect to OSHA, uh, but that's a small thing. And as we continue to move forward and, and continue to do, do things safely together, uh, be vaccinated, uh, if that's a possibility for you, it just helps us more and more to drive these numbers down uh, and to get back to our normal lives and our practices, uh, which is so vitally important to so many people in Los Angeles County. So I so much appreciate uh, you all being here um, as we try to find ways to move forward, to move through our calendars, to address the back backlogs in all disciplines, and again, to do so safely. Uh, but this is our, our joint uh, effort to address caseloads in our PI hubs through this very innovative uh, comeback, I, you know, I guess you could say, uh, comeback to MSCs. And this virtual program is just so innovative and it's going to play such a big part in that effort. So um, as usual, I have some people to thank. Um, I want to thank everybody on this call uh, for once, but uh, I want to thank especially uh, Kala, uh, President uh, Jeannie Harrison, who does, does so much, ASCDC President-elect uh, Marta Alkumbach, I always get that, that, right, uh, that wrong, I'm sorry, Marta, uh, for their hard work together day in and day out, bringing this important program back online that we, that you know, it wouldn't operate, uh, uh, we couldn't operate it in person due to the pandemic, but bringing it back online. And so a big applause to you. It's so well-deserved. Thank you. Virtual applause, everybody. Hands up, smiley faces, whatever you want to put on there. Um, but without uh, this joint effort, uh, we would not be here today. So thank you. Um, and this effort uh, represents the best of California lawyers, Southern California lawyers, what we can do together in the common interest of serving the public while also helping our member lawyers uh, bring about resolutions for their clients uh, and to move through their cases and to get their, their businesses, their practices back online and back to normal, which I know 
uh, we all want to do. It's so, so vitally important to you individually, but to your clients. I also want to thank uh, the Beverly Hills Bar Foundation and its president, Linda Spiegel, who introduced me. Thanks again, Linda, uh, for launching this platform and providing the fin financial wherewithal and legal commitment uh, to, to getting it off the ground. So, Linda, I'm always thanking you. Thank you again. Um, and thank you to, uh, I can't forget, uh, uh, LACPA. Uh, thank you to LACPA and its president, uh, Tamila Jensen, and Executive Director Stan Bissey for hosting this town hall and allowing us us all to reach to reach their members, to reach all of our members together. So again, thank you uh, to LACPA. Um, again, I also wanna, wanna say thanks to all the, all the folks who are on this, uh, this Zoom call. Uh, it is, I mean, this is a team effort and without you, this would be nothing. I, I see the numbers go up they keep going up. Like, was that Jerry Lewis telethon when all the numbers would go up and I wanna paint the board in a minute. Uh, but uh, thank you to all the members uh, from CALA, ASCDC, as well as, uh, as LA, the LA chapter of ABOTA for already agreeing to serve as uh, volunteer settlement officers. I'm also informed that we have, uh, we have a, you know, such a very uh, enthusiastic response to, to it all. And your ongoing volunteerism is really what, what keeps us going forward, what makes this program work online. I wanna acknowledge uh, how much of a difference you're making both your clients in each case, as well as cumulatively for, for the court and our operations. And, you know, and we're struggling. Uh, we're struggling like you're struggling, but again, working together is gonna help us all resolve these problems. Uh, not only allowing people uh, to move on with their lives and businesses and to help the business machine of Los Angeles run more smoothly. Uh, and, you know, just to, you know, just to help us get back to, to access to justice and in a more meaningful and expansive way. So thank you. Every case settled saves us about a week or more of court time. That's an, that's an important thing because if we can move some of the low hanging fruit, fruit or some of, the, uh, some of the ones that we have an option in uh, to move on without trial, it helps the other cases move up behind it that really do need the trial. So again, thanks, um, you know, this helps with our jurors this helps with our staff. Um, it is just an all around effort. And the value of, of, of the savings, I mean, really is immense in budget numbers. And we're still coming out of our 10% cut, uh, but it's gonna help us move forward. So again, the pandemic is not totally over. We're still acting as partners together. Um, this, the virtual platform is essential to, to how this works. And uh, again, I can't, I can't say thank you enough, but I, am, I have deep pride for our legal community, and this is the prime example of that. And I do need to thank in-house uh, uh, David Callen, the supervising uh, judge of, of, the criminal, of the civil courts. I'm sorry, David, I was going to make you criminal courts, too. That could be uh, scary. <laughs> but I won't do that to you. And to Delilah uh, Crowell-Lyons, who uh, has been a, a, a friend and a partner in settlements for so long, who just does an amazing job over at our MSC courts and as supervisor of the Springs, uh, Spring Street building. Uh, again, without you, uh, I don't know where we'd be, uh, but it's a great moment and I'm gonna pass it over to, uh, to Judge Cowan to continue on. All right, thank you, Judge Taylor. And good afternoon to all of you. I can't see all of you, but uh, it's nice to know, know that you're all out there. And uh, it's really terrific for me to be a part of this, uh, see this come out of fruition, working with Jean Harrison, Marta Alkenbrank. You know, you guys have been great uh, to work with, and I know how hard you've been working to, to really bring this to fruition. So um, congratulations. Um, I want to kind of tell our audience some real not get right into some nuts and bolts for you um, as to how um, this program functions vis-a-vis -vis also going out to trial uh, and how this is practically going to affect your cases. Um, but before I do that, I do want to just make um, note of one bigger part, bigger part of this picture. Judge Taylor just uh, approved uh, literally minutes ago a notice to attorneys that is going to go out to all civil, uh, to, all, to all of the bar related to all of our civil cases that the uh, separate MSC requirement that every case that goes to a jury trial have to have gone to an MSC or mediation 90 days before trial is now ending. Uh, that was done uh, for a variety of reasons relating to making sure that we could slowly ramp up 
uh, given uh, restricted restrictions on having jury trials and other related issues. So that I want you to know, and that's not just a PI hub issue, that's civil unlimited, all your unlimited civil cases where you're aware of that 90 day MSC is now, unless it's already been set going forward, that's no longer a requirement. Now turning to our PI hub, each of the PI hub judges has an independent uh, uh, opportunity if they wish to order an MSC, regardless of what that that 90 day requirement that is no longer uh, in place. Uh, and so I wanted to talk about how this program fits in with that. Uh, on June 23, I issued uh, a sixth amended standing order, which allows each of our uh, five PR hub judges, if they wish to order a mandatory settlement program, sorry, a mandatory settlement conference through the remote LA law uh, program uh, so that if they wish this is now available officially um, and the, the order sets forth what exactly a plaintiff's lawyer in particular has to do to start that ball rolling after the judge has in fact made that order and it's critical that we remember that well I'm now telling you please ask you to remember that um, the use of this uh, program starts with the court order allowing you to do so. You cannot uh, just sign up online without a court order. Uh, you will be bounced from the system, as it were, if you've not done that. This is a limited resource. People are volunteering. And as Judge Crowley is going to talk about uh, in his section, we need to make sure that these cases are trial ready. Uh, we don't want to waste our volunteers time without a case that is in fact ready to go to trial. Uh, so these are going to be cases that typically will be ordered out at a final status conference uh, and uh, hopefully can be uh, concluded um, before the trial date or uh, very, or we may, he, the judges may allow for a short window of extension uh, uh, for the trial date for this to go through, but we're not gonna be putting these cases off in order to, in, that people can also go, go use this program. Initially, uh, I want to break down the cases into uh, PI hub cases into two categories. First, we have cases that are going to go into this program. Those again are trial ready cases, which can be uh, reasonably, uh, there's a reasonable opportunity for these to be settled within three hours. Each of these volunteer attorneys is doing just a, it's a three hour commitment. It's not a day commitment, a two day commitment. It's three hours. So it needs to be relatively straightforward. And so what we're starting with is a one plaintiff, one defendant case. Those are the cases that are gonna go into this program. And I know Jeannie and Marta have very um, serious ambitions to expand, to make this program scalable as, as, as the term uh, and grow it. But right now uh, we're gonna do one plaintiff and one defendant cases to make sure it work, works smoothly and, that, and it's, that it's a success, which it will be. Uh, and because it is possible within three hours to, to come to, to, to talk through your differences, figure out what's involved and offer and for the two lawyers to offer an alternative to these people uh, independent of having to go to a trial. Second, we have the second category of cases I wanna talk very briefly about, which are those which do not qualify for this program. I want you, want you to see this bigger picture. Uh, each judge may, may or may not still order a mandatory settlement conference independent of this program, for example, a two defendant case, a case with a cross complaint, uh, a case that might be take longer than three hours to conclude. For those cases, talk to your judge about whether or not it's appropriate to have some sort of perhaps judicial MSC or perhaps a private mediation uh, to avoid a trial. There's gonna be two gatekeepers, however, to uh, that. First, you're gonna have to persuade judges like Judge Crowley here that this is a case that's really worth a judge's time to spend to try to resolve it. Is, is this a case perhaps we've got a minor plaintiff who's in school, doesn't wanna take off time from school, and we can, we can avoid her having to, to come? Is, it, is there a case perhaps on the other end of life, somebody who's a senior, it would be a real struggle to have them to come down to the courthouse. Uh, maybe we can save that person um, a jury trial. Uh, so that there are going to be reasons. And then you're going to have to persuade me in Department 1 uh, to find a judge who is available to hear these, to hear an MSC. And right now, that's not going to be so easy. 
uh, because Judge Taylor has given me instructions, basically. We need to move on with trying cases now. We've had almost 18 months where we've not been able to uh, conduct the kinds of the number of trials that we would have liked. And so now we're full steam ahead and our trial judges are gonna be very busy holding, uh, doing these trials. But there are gonna be occasions when perhaps uh, they are available for a day or two and we can, fit, we can fit an MSC in before your trial date. But we're not gonna lose the firm trial date your PI hub judge has already provided. So that's kind of a bigger picture. I've, I've, we've got just a limited amount of time here, so I'm now going to pass this on to um, the next well, speakers. Well, Judge Count, Judge Count, before you pass it off, in, in right. my exuberance, my over exuberance, I forgot to mention Judge Crowley, and, and thank him for participating as well. So I'm again, Dan, I'm sorry. No worries. No worries. All right. Well, I am now going to pass this on to Judge Crowley and Ms. Alcumbright. So take it away. Thank you. Okay, well, Judge Crowley and I are going to take a, a few minutes here to discuss kind of the history of the original program that, that uh, the virtual program was modeled after, kind of the benefits of having uh, uh, litigators as the settlement officers, and kind, and, and kind of give a brief introduction of the design and purpose of the Resolve LA Law or Resolve Law LA uh, virtual program. And just so you all have an understanding of the history of the program, back in about 2017, the original in-person PI MSC program uh, was started. And it was a true collaborative effort, just like this program uh, is, the virtual program is, between the courts and in particular, the PI hub judges and the Consumer Attorneys Association of uh, Los Angeles, the Association of Southern California Defense Council, and the Los Angeles chapter of uh, the American Board of Trial Lawyers or LA ABOTA to come together and try to solve, you know, a, a, the high number of cases and trying to get these some, some cases resolved. Um, and in looking back at my emails in preparation for this uh, webinar, I found emails between myself, uh, attorneys Pat Kelly, Victor George, and our very own, and, and Judge Kevin Bruce. Brazil, and our very own Judge Crowley, back when he was just Dan Crowley, um, setting up the original program. So it's good to see we have continuity here uh, with this virtual program. Um, but, you know, the idea behind the original program, which we replicated here, was to have two seasoned, very experienced settlement officers, one plaintiff attorney and one defense attorney, to act as the settlement officers. And so the ASCDC members were the defense uh, settlement officers and the uh, CALA attorneys were the plaintiff settlement officers. And then the LA ABOTA um, attorneys could act as either one depending upon their practice area. And so you, the parties then worked and, uh, in the in-person program for three hours with the litigants and their counsel trying to get them to uh, settle their case within three hours. And it was a great collaborative effort. Um, it was a really great experience. And I was, we were very happy to report that about 50% of the cases that were ordered into that in-person program settled. Uh, Judge Crowley, do you have anything you wanna add? Sure, I'm gonna talk more about what I see as the benefits of the program, but it was, it was great fun doing it live. Uh, the downside is you'd have to take time out of your day and slip down either here to Spring Street or we would also do them up on the ninth floor uh, off of the cafeteria. There were a couple of uh, rooms that we could use, but it was a pretty big time commitment. And I think this program has the, the advantage of being able to do it uh, virtually and, you know, maybe a little bit of prep time, uh, no travel time, and it's going to be much more efficient. And again, for reasons that I'll, that I'll talk about later in the program, I am really excited about this and the benefits that it's going to offer to the court, to you individually as, as settlement officers, to your clients, and then I think to the bar as a whole. There, there's all, all of us are going to benefit in, in so many ways, but uh, we'll hold that till later. So I believe we are on now to uh, Ms. Harrison and Marta, right? Before we, we jump in, I mean, the benefit, I just want to touch upon the benefit again, because using these seasoned settlement officers, um, you can, the, you know, for example, the defense settlement officers can really work with the defense attorneys and say, hey, you know, have you looked at this? Because 
you're now, the settlement officers are looking at this case with a fresh pair of eyes and can actually kind of, might be able to see the case in a different light and also work with plaintiff's counsel to kind of see, you know, where there are some vulnerabilities in each of the cases and work together to try to get the case resolved. Um, I remember a situation where, you know, the defense attorney was really entrenched that the case wasn't worth anything. And I met the plaintiff and, and I thought, you know, well, maybe the numbers might be a bit high or the demand numbers were a bit high. I thought that plaintiff was going to make a fabulous witness that, you know, on her behalf at, you know, sitting before a jury. And really, we were able to impress upon the litigants that this is your one last chance to have a say so in how what what how your case resolves. And so, you know, you're going to go to trial and somebody else is going to be making those decisions. So I think it was really powerful to have those types of seasoned litigators talking to the parties, talking to counsel and trying to get the case resolved. Well, picking up on that just real quick, I, I think there is an advantage to having a peer have that conversation with you than having a judge have the conversation with you sometimes, because I think the parties may be more uh, receptive to one of their colleagues pointing out things in their case, as opposed to, you know, somebody who hasn't done it for a long time and is just sitting up on the bench and has lost, uh, lost contact or, uh, you know, lost the feel. So it, it is, it's a, it's a great design. Right. So now Jeannie and I are going to demonstrate some of the features on the uh, Resolve Law website. And we just want to emphasize to the settlement officers and the attorneys um, involved that it, you know, it's, it's a very self-explanatory website. And the more you use it and become familiar with it, the, the easier it will become uh, and less and, and not intimidating at all. It's very user friendly. Yes. And thank you so much. Thanks so much uh, to the court, especially to Judge Cowan for spending so many hours in, in meetings, in programming and design meetings uh, with us over the past number of months. And um, Marta and I have been designing, we are the, the, the lawyer designers of the program, the two of us. Um, and you'll see an additional individual here who, from whom you may hear, but who is going to demonstrate what he has built. That is Jose Torres, who is the coder, um, designer, builder from the technical um, component and aspect of this, who's been incredible to work with at PESC, the exchange. Um, and they have a little bit of history in working on this because they actually worked with a different, very scaled down model that is not the same, but a different model for Resolve Law San Diego. But uh, the work that they did on that program, um, I became aware of, and I thought, hmm, I think that we can modify this to suit the Los Angeles Superior Court needs. And that's what we've done. So um, we're very excited about this. Uh, we are constantly making changes. And so we do appreciate your feedback um, and uh, your uh, your positive support and feedback for all of the work that we've done. So thank you to everyone on this call for, uh, for helping. This is not possible without you and especially to the Beverly Hills Bar Foundation. Um, when we reached out to partner with you on this, you immediately saw the benefit to the Los Angeles legal community. And this literally would not exist without you. So thank you so much for everything that you've done. Um, with that being said, again, uh, it's, it bears saying early and often uh, that these cases currently coming into our Resolve Law LA virtual PI Hub MSC program are for the PI Hub cases currently. And they are the for one plaintiff, one defendant cases. Um, and it may be that we'll be able to scale this up to, do, to uh, attend to other cases in the relative near future, but we need to get the first run of cases through this program. So we are going to show you uh, how this works. And Jose is going to share his screen. And we're gonna begin with, we're gonna go over three components. This is the website, it's resolvelawla.com, resolvelawla.com. And you'll see 
uh, here that we're going to go over three components. Uh, number one, settlement officer registration um, and scheduling. Number two, attorney and case registration. And then number three, the MSC module. We're going to show that to you as well. So we're going to start with the settlement officer registration. What I want to tell you as we're getting to that point is I want to tell you something very important. The settlement officer registration has three steps, okay? Three main steps. Number one, you have to register yourself and create an account for yourself as a settlement officer. Um, you, you'll see what this looks like. It's very intuitive. You'll see that at the, at the top, the registration steps are listed to assist you with making sure that um, this gets done correctly. And on the sign up type, um, you will see that we have listed settlement officer and attorney for party. You may choose either or, you may also choose both. I suggest to you that if you are um, an attorney handling active litigation matters that may ultimately be assigned, um, if you have, may have a case assigned, you're gonna wanna go ahead and select both of them so that you're registering yourself both as a settlement officer and attorney for, the par for a party, even though you don't yet have a case in the system. That's okay. This is just starting your registration so that you have your account. You're gonna input the information here um, that is asked for and just wanna call your attention to phone. We're asking for, um, if possible, an SMS uh, text message available phone because we will send you automate, automated notifications via text and email if you give us the information to be able to do so. So your initial, um, your personal phone and, second, and email information will be input here. Secondary email and phone are for example, if you have a paralegal or assistant, a legal secretary who's assisting you and you want them to be notified of everything. Um, this is where you would input their information again on the phone number, it would, if you want that individual, that assistant to receive text messages, you're gonna to need to give a text available phone number. Then you're also going to identify which are the notification methods that you want to receive. You want email and MSS or SMS, you're gonna tell us that. If you only want email, you only designate email. If you only want text, you only designate text. Um, very simple and straightforward. On your settlement officer preferences, you are going to identify whether you are signing up to volunteer as a plaintiff settlement officer, a defendant settlement officer, or if you can and are willing to serve as either. Um, I will tell you that already we have 129 settlement officers uh, registered through this exact process here. Um, 50 of you have indicated, or 50 of them have indicated that they are um, volunteering as plaintiff settlement officers, 36 is defendant settlement officers, and 43 as either. So again, um, if you can serve as either, please do. Uh, you will see that a state bar number is required. Um, our system does cross check with the state bars registration information and uh, an actual live uh, um, um, valid state bar number is required. Otherwise you will not be able to proceed. Um, so then you hit create account and that's really all it takes to create your account as a settlement officer. And this is the same process that you use to register yourself as an attorney. So I told you that this is a three-step process for settlement officers, right? And pay attention here, everybody because for the settlement officers you're gonna receive and for the, for the attorneys for the parties, you're going to receive an email verifying, you're asking you to verify your account. We wanna verify the email address is correct. So you're gonna receive an email that looks like this. You will and then- I just, If I can just interrupt for just a second, if you do not get this email in short order, please check your junk or spam emails and then and try to check your notifications and, cha and change that so that doesn't happen anymore. But Go in there and see and, and see if it went in there and then follow the next steps that Jeannie can outline. Right, because sometimes these email notifications do go into spam. So you are going to want to look for emails from Resolve Law Los Angeles, Resolve Law LA. You must um, uh, confirm your account and you're gonna click that link um, to confirm the account. It is then going to take you back into the system uh, where you will input uh, a password. 
and it's going to look like this. This is you're going to get directed right back into the system after you click the link in the email to confirm your account. You're then going to set your password for your account, okay? And once you set the password, then you're going to be directed to let's see, your <laughs> dashboard. <laughs> Thanks, Jose. <laughs> I was figuring we were just going to pop that up. Dashboard. Holy cow, what is this? Oh, this means you're in the system. OK, you, this is where you have to go to schedule yourself for MSC duty. Just let me say it again. Just because you've registered an account does not mean that you've actually volunteered for any settlement officer dates or times to act as a settlement officer. You must first um, confirm your account through that uh, that email link set your password and then come to your dashboard. This dashboard is what you're gonna interact with from here on out, okay? Um, you have, because we, we uh, registered us ourselves here as both a settlement officer and an attorney, you'll see that we have a settlement officer dashboard and an attorney dashboard portion of this page, okay? So what are we going to do as a settlement officer to schedule ourselves and our availability? We're gonna click the MSC duty scheduler. That's where we go. Look at this system, it's so cool. I'm super excited. Okay, so you'll see the MSC duty scheduler um, uh, calendar here. And what I want you to see, hold on, Jose, if we could just click forward on months just to show them that this actually carries out for months and months ahead of time. Um, you are going to go through this and schedule when you are available. Right now, our first run of cases for MSC duty is through the end of August. So if you haven't signed up, if, or if you have not yet actually scheduled your availability as a settlement officer, you need to come into your, M you need to register or come back into your MSC duty scheduler and select the dates and times on which you are available to act as a settlement officer. We have two times on every day that is consistent with the in-person program, the 9 a.m. slot, so that's 9 to 12, and the 1.30 p.m. slot, which is 1.30 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. So there are two MSCs per day, not on court holidays. You'll see we have the court holiday blocked out. Um, and so you will schedule and select and deselect um, your availability as you uh, pursue it to your own personal calendar. And once you, cl uh, you click your availability um, and schedule that, you're going to end up, uh, and, you know, you can do as, as many as you want. You're going to click done. And you're going to come back to, it's going to cycle you back to the duty scheduler and dashboard page, and it's going to show what you've signed up for, okay? And you're going to say, um, you're, it's going to show exactly uh, what you've signed up for, and it's going to show that the MSC has not been, an MSC has not actually been scheduled for that yet, okay? And likewise, if an MSC actually has been scheduled for a date and time for which you have actually um, volunteered, you'll see it under your settlement officer case assignments. You'll see the Burt versus Ernie case here. Um, that is telling you that as a settlement officer, you have been assigned the Burt versus Ernie case, which is set for trial on uh, October 1st, 2021. Not actually, don't worry, you don't have to fit that in. Um, Judge Crowley, uh, and but the MSC is scheduled for this, you know, test case is, is scheduled for uh, September 30th from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. This is where you're going to go to join the MSC as the settlement officer. The MSC will not start until a settlement officer starts the MSC through this system. Um, okay. And you will be able to start the MSC um, up to 15 minutes before the scheduled time for the MSC. Um, okay, so that is um, the, the settlement officer registration. And again, it's a three-step process. You have to create your account. You have to verify your account through the email link. And then once verified and your password is set, you come back in and you schedule yourself for the times you are available to act as a settlement officer. Then you will receive notifications confirming all of these things. 
And, so, um, and you'll also yeah. receive notifications. Sorry, Gina, just going to jump in. You will also receive uh, notifications when the MSC has been set for a date and time that you previously indicated you were available. So if you had set yourself up for both email and text messages on your cell phone, you, once that MSC gets scheduled for that date and time that you've indicated you're available, you're, you're available then you will be notified of that and then uh, you'll get further information about the, the actual MSC um, through those notifications. Okay, and so this is the kind of confirmation email that you will be receiving. Um, so, okay, terrific. Um, that's the just sort of high level quick overview of settlement officer registration and attorney registration. So we're also gonna go through um, the plaintiff's attorney case registration. So as with the in-person program, it is the plaintiff attorney's responsibility and Judge Cowan has set this forth in the sixth amended standing order regarding the MSCs, which we've also posted on the website um, as well. But it is the plaintiff's attorney's responsibility um, to register the case in the system. And so we'll go to attorneys for parties registration. Uh, okay, so this is again, you know, you have to, if you haven't already registered and an, an have an account, you have to do so. Um, if you are an attorney for a plaintiff in a case where you've been ordered into the program, you'll then register and create an account. It's the same process you're going to need to confirm your account through the um, email link that's going to be sent to you and set a password. And then you're going to come in and register a case. So um, you do so through your dashboard. Again, Dashboard is where you're going to live and work through through this entire system once you create an account. So we're going to go to register a new case. And what that looks like is this. You're going to create the case. Um, you're going to input information. We have all of the fields here, including the date that your case has, the case has been um, ordered to the MSC. You must input the date that the case was ordered to the MSC. Not only that, you're gonna to have to confirm that the date was ordered into an MSC by LASC. And this window is going to pop up to remind you that you can only use this system if your case has been ordered into the system, okay? So then you'll confirm, yes, I've been ordered into the system. You're gonna input the remaining information, which is um, just taken, you know, most of it's taken straight from, uh, uh, the uh, some of the forms that LASC has had us use before with the in-person program. Here's the key, okay? Before you come in as plaintiff's counsel to register this case, you really have to meet and confer with opposing counsel because as with the in-person program, it is plaintiff's counsel's responsibility to, um, number one, obtain the available dates and times for all the parties to be able to participate in the virtual MSC. And number two, obtain all of the information to be able to input the names of the participants who are expected to um, participate in the MSC. So what does that mean? That means that I, as the plaintiff's attorney, am going to have to call Marta as the defense attorney. And I'm gonna say, Marta, you know, we've been ordered into the program. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do according to the Sixth Amendment's uh, amended standing order. And I'm calling you for us to meet and confer about available dates and times for our virtual MSC. So I'm gonna need to know all of the people from the defense side who are going to participate, all the attorneys, all of the parties, the insurance adjuster, I have to input all that information. And um, I need their, their emails and their cell phones if you want them to get text uh, notified. Um, and we need to agree upon a date and a time. And so then Marta, what are you going to say? Um, well, in addition to giving you availability after I've conferred with my clients and my, you know, the insurance company representative who has to attend, that is, I has to attend um, they have to be there with full settlement authority, whoever that person is, I'm going to have to meet, you know, call my client and call the insurance company representative to see when they're available. And then I'm going to give Jeannie some dates and times that are convenient. And hopefully we can land upon some dates and times that are convenient and get the case 
uh, set up for an MSC within, uh, you know, before our trial date. I'm also going to provide Jeannie with some information um, so she could input into the system uh, the name of my client, an email uh, information for my client. And if that, if that, uh, if the client wants that information to be had, um, as, as well as the insurance uh, adjuster person that's going to attend, and that allows. If that information is inputted on the screen that's being demonstrated right now, then they will be getting emails and text messages. If the number that's provided is SMS, uh, you know, ready, they'll get. They'll also get emails uh, reminding them of the uh, of the MSC, the date and time of the MSC. They'll also get uh, a calendar invite and a Zoom link. If that information is not provided by me to Jeannie. And when I get the Zoom link that is emailed to me, I can share that Zoom link with my client and with the attorney, with the, excuse me, with the insurance company representative that has full settlement authority that also has to attend the settlement conference. So all that information has to be given to Jeannie, or if not, I'm responsible to make sure that my client and the insurance company representative has that information in advance of the MSC. Right. Um, perfect. Because again, this is how we will get notifications sent to everybody who has to participate in the MSC. So this information is really crucial. Um, and plaintiff and defense counsel need to work together to make sure that the information is input. We are also going to put a Word document on the website for um, counsel for the parties uh, to be able, especially counsel for plaintiff, um, to be able to collect all of this information on the Word document, I'll have an assistant help you before you come in and register the case. So you have, you know exactly what you need to get. Okay, so um, that's the registration. So then once you input all of this information, you're going to go after you know the date and time that is convenient that you've agreed upon between plaintiff and defense attorneys, you're going to go and schedule this thing, this, this case for the MSC. So let's go to the scheduler. Okay, here we go. Cool. So this is where, okay, so you're going to, anyway, you go back to your, once you, once you have all the information, you're going to be able to go on your dashboard and hit schedule MSC. Okay. So we're going to go to schedule MSC. And you'll see in this yellow bar, before scheduling the MSC, please confirm the availability of the parties. It's, it's really important that you do so. So what are we looking at right now? We're looking at the available dates and times for MSCs that could be set um, starting uh, Wednesday the 30th. And so the green dots, okay, mean that there are, you, you can schedule an MSC at that time. All right. That means and that means currently you're looking at the system live right now. This means that there is both a plaintiff and a settlement a defense settlement officer who have registered as available to act as a settlement officer um, Wednesday, the 30th of June at 9 a.m. We do not have it's one of two things. Either we don't have a plaintiff and defense settlement officer at 1.30 p.m., which is why there's a red dot or that spot is already taken and it's filled for an MSC. That's what the red dot means, but the red dot tells you it's unavailable for whatever reason. The green dot means it's available and you can pick that time. And so here you see that on our test case, the trial date is July 30th. So you'll see that the system says that you're able to um, schedule the, the MSC all the way up to the 29th, the business day before the actual trial. So you will then select whichever date and time works for you. Um, and let's say you're gonna select 9 a.m. on the 29th for this particular MSC. That's terrific. Then once you select that date, um, this system is going to um, populate the information and confirm your MSC. It's gonna send you notifications. So what you will see is you're gonna see that it gives you, it registers the information that you've just scheduled the MSC and it tells you that here. Okay, so and for your versus Ernie case, go ahead, Marta. 
And in addition to sending notifications to the uh, plaintiff's attorney, the defense attorney, and all the other people that have been registered by the plaintiff's counsel, the, the defendant, the claims representative that's going to be present, um, the settlement officers will also receive notification if that, you know, that they've now a date and time that they've pre-selected as available, they've now been chosen. Um, you know, so now they're going to go forward with an MSC on one of those dates. And at, they'll also receive notification that they need to do a conflict check. So they now know the names of the parties involved in the litigation. And so before they can act as a settlement officer for that particular uh, MSC, they have to clear conflicts and they must positively affirm that they have no conflicts in order to serve. And they won't even be able to join the MSC once we, uh, you know, uh, join the virtual platform and under, uh, you know, to, you know, to activate the MSC unless they've agreed. Yes, Jose, thank you for showing that. Unless they actually, you know, affirmatively state they have no conflicts. And that, that means that they have actually uh, done the conflict check. Okay. So if you affirm that you have no conflicts and can act as a settlement officer, you must have actually done the conflict check. Um, and then what a question was also submitted about, uh, can you cover how to edit a date? Um, if you have volunteered as a settlement officer, you do that through your dashboard. As long as you have not been assigned a case, as a settlement officer so that an MSC has not yet been assigned to you, then you can click and unclick as you wish. So if you, uh, if I make myself available at 1.30 p.m. on, fr on July uh, 2nd, and then something comes up and I have to say, oh, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't do this, then I just come into my scheduler, my uh, MSC duty scheduler, and I unclick myself. Uh, that's it. It's that simple. Unless there is a an MSC that's actually been assigned to you, in which case you're not going to just be able to cancel yourself. The only person who can cancel a scheduled MSC is the plaintiff's attorney. You will have to notify the plaintiff's attorney. You'll have to contact them through the information that you're provided on the case. So Jose, can we go back to the dashboard? So under this Burt versus Ernie case, if I'm the settlement officer, I've been assigned this case and I need to cancel, then I'm going to go back to the dashboard and on this case and find out who created the case. I'm going to have to call and email and tell the plaintiff, uh, the plaintiff's counsel, I'm sorry, even though I said I could do this, I can't do it for whatever reason. Hopefully it's a true emergency. Because this entire case, the, the, the MSC is going to have to be canceled and then rescheduled, all right? And everybody's going to get notifications, et cetera, et cetera. So um, that's a big deal. That's the reason why it's really important to make sure that if you are volunteering, you know, that it, it, then, you know, that that's an available date, okay? So... All right, let's go into, uh, Marta, have I covered everything? Do we need to cover anything else just, before we just, show them the? Just briefly, um, you'll see on the screen that Jose is showing everybody right now under case documents, you can add as plaintiff's counsel and defense counsel, a confidential uh, MSC brief. Neither side will be able to see it. The only people that will be able to see it will be the settlement officers. Well, and, and of course you could go back and view it. You know, if I'm the defense settlement officer or excuse me, the defendant attorney, I can upload the brief and obviously look at my own brief, but plaintiff's counsel will not be able to look at the brief, uh, but the settlement officers will have access to both briefs and will be, and will have read them and be prepared when they, you know, when they show up for the MSC. So it, so that's part of the on that. it's terrific that you've got that feature. And I really strongly encourage people to, to take advantage of it. As you all know, having those briefs really gets the, the MSC moving right away. Exactly. And it prepares the settlement officers, uh, you know, for what lies ahead when they're, uh, you know, when they enter the room. And again, with only three hours, people have to be prepared walking in. Right, exactly. So, um, and again, the settlement officers will access the MSC briefs through their dashboard 
um, when they come in, they will be able to access the on, on this specific case because the settlement officers obviously are, you know, given the case that has been assigned to them, they're given access to the case that's been assigned to them. So they'll have all of this information um, to prepare. All right, and so then I think we can move on to uh, we can move on to the actual integrated Zoom MSC video function. Okay, so um, Jose is going to start that for us. Um, so what I think to me what's important is that everybody sees that this is this you know functionality exists right. And you'll see on the page that the plaintiff parties are listed. And Jose, can you scroll up a little bit so we can, there we go. So the plaintiff parties are listed and the defendant parties are listed. So when you are acting as the settlement officer, you're going to know at a glance who is where um, and who should be assigned to where. We also, you'll see that um, uh, Jose is, is clicking through assigning people and this kind of thing. What I he's showing you the, the functionality as a settlement officer, what you're able to do. And even though this looks like, whoa, how does this all work, et cetera, et cetera. We have a step-by-step -step, um, picture guide that's really easy to follow. It's super easy. Um, we have that uh, on the website and you'll be able to download that and print it, et cetera. Um, when, and when you're acting as a settlement officer. It's just like when we all started using Zoom a year ago, uh, we weren't familiar with it. So all it takes is really one time to get familiar with how to navigate the breakout rooms. And as a settlement officer, you have the functionality of being able to go between rooms because of course you need to. Um, when Marta and I are acting uh, as settlement officers, we need to be able to go from room to room, the plaintiff's room to the defendant's room. And then we also have our own pre-programmed breakout room where Marta and I can meet um, to discuss as settlement officers what our plans are, what are the other, what's the other side saying if, if I've been meeting with the plaintiff side and she with the defense, and what our plans are, our strategy to try to get this case settled. So this really does work, but I want to tell you that you'll see that people are, you know, automatically assigned to rooms based on the registration that that plaintiff's attorney did at the very beginning and the indication on those drop down menus of is it a plaintiff, is it a is it an attorney, is it a defendant, is it an insurance adjuster, who is what? That's the reason why it's so important to get that information and input it here and put the contact information because if people join via the links that are automatically sent to them once their, in their information is input, then all of the pre-programmed information will automatically assign everybody to their correct rooms. Otherwise, the plaintiff officer or defense settlement officer will need to assign the unassigned people. Um, and uh, it, there's gonna be a section up here that's a group that says unassigned. If in fact, people don't join via the information um, that was input for them, or if there was simply just a link that was emailed to them and their information has not been, been input into the system. So, um, but it works. It works incredibly well. The settlement officers must actually join through the Resolve Law LA system so that you all of the pre-programmed information exists there for you. If you need to go back and look at information from the case, you will simply open, open that in a new tab and you'll have access to that. So you wanna go back to the dashboard on this, you're gonna open it in a new tab and then click the links on the case, that's it. And then you'll go back to the MSC. Um, and that's really it. It's as simple as that. Except Marta, what else do you want to say? The only thing I wanted to just mention is, you know, life happens. Sometimes your Wi-Fi goes out, a power, there could be, you know, a, a power problem with your laptop or your Wi-Fi signal dies, whatever it is. Have backup communication channels set up. The most important thing is to have the MSC go forward. Keep the lines of communication going. If you have to call your, if the litigants have to call their attorney or the settlement officers have to call one another, you know, make sure you have that, that information at hand so you can continue talking because that's the most important part. 
And if something does happen and you're, you know, and, you know, there's a technological glitch, log out, log back in and keep talking to one another. Let's settle these cases. That's the most important part. Yep. And then also you did see, you see the, uh, the red box here for urgent consultation with the judge. This is available only to the settlement officers. This is in, as Marta keeps saying, in case of emergency, break glass, but true emergency only for the settlement officers um, to contact, uh, it's, it's typically going to be Judge Sinanian, um, but it may be someone, for example, Judge Lyons uh, that day. We don't know, but this is going to be the email that's provided to uh, the settlement officers and only they are allowed to contact um, the, the duty judge uh, in the event of an urgent, urgent emergency only, and only the settlement officers. Okay, so I think we have to, we need to move on. We've shown you a lot of functionality. I just wanna reiterate that, um, you know, we've got a lot of tutorials and PDFs that show you how to do things on the, on the website. Once you get in and you start using the site, it's gonna make a lot more sense to you and the system will make a lot more sense to you. Um, if there are problems, then just email us through the contact page or help at resolvelawla.com. And thank you for watching. Um, and I think now we're going to hand this over to Chris Omey. Thank you so much, Jeannie and Marta. I'm just going to talk a little bit about I, I have the pleasure of representing the American Board of Trial Advocates local Los Angeles uh, chapter. And also want to give a big shout out to Judges Taylor, Callen, and my old friend, jo Judge uh, Crowley. Uh, this is a great program. Um, for those of you who don't know who or what a BOTA is, uh, it's a real trial lawyer organization con consisting of plaintiff's lawyers, defense lawyers, and judges. And there are 91 chapters all across the country in 50 states and in uh, Washington, D.C., and, and I'd encourage any ABOTA member um, on this webinar to join. It, it was easy. I actually joined up uh, Jeannie last week. It was very easy. Uh, I'm yet to choose a few um, MSCs coming up, but I'll promise I'll do that this afternoon. Uh, the great thing about this program, or one of the great things, is that you get folks from Cala, LACPA, others, and ABOTA. And those ABOTA folks really have experience trying cases, you know, actually trying cases for the plaintiffs or defense. And I actually have done a few. I think it was only about three of the in-person MSC programs. And I had ABOTA folks on the other side as defense lawyers. And it was a great experience. And I'm sure this is going to carry over and really make sense, especially I want to kind of focus this a little bit on the plaintiff side, especially for those younger lawyers, newer lawyers, smaller firms, this doesn't cost anything. You're getting experienced folks. Um, you don't have to, you don't have to travel. You don't have to pay for parking. Uh, and out of the three that I did in the past, two of them settled at the MSC program. And then one later on, just as Marta said, keep it going, keep the lines of communication open. It's, there's nothing wrong with, with doing that. So it's, it's really unique. I think it's going to help, hopefully, with the backlog. Uh, the other thing is, I, out of those three little sessions, I did gain new friends and um, reconnected with a few um, fellow ABOTA defense lawyers. So with that, I just want to thank you all again. And, and it's really uh, a pleasure representing ABOTA uh, during this webinar. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chris. And we look forward to all of the ABOTA members um, signing up and volunteering as settlement officers. And on the uh, settlement officer front, I think Judge Lyons has a few words she'd like to say. Good afternoon, everybody. And thank you so much to all those who are volunteering to be settlement officers. I was given the easy task of telling you how to resolve the case in three hours, and I was given five minutes, so I will be happy to do that. Um, I am uh, going to share with you just a couple of tips, because I know a lot of you are not interested in being seven offers, but are volunteering, are attorneys representing the clients. Um, I just finished a six-week, uh, six-day course at the Pepperdine University on the Strauss Institute for Dispute Resolution, 
And I could share with you for days and go on and talking about effective settlement negotiations, but I have five minutes. So I wanted to share with you just a couple of tips that I think will be useful. And uh, I know I thank you for sharing those, as you can see, that's being displayed. However, I'm just going to focus on uh, maybe two or three because of the limited time that I have. Number one tip for the settlement officers is, of course, to be prepared. Uh, you will be surprised what you learn and the strategies you can learn from just carefully reading the briefs. And I think what's most important also for settlement officers is to learn how to be able, you're changing hats from an advocate to a neutral. So it's a different skill set that you will need from an, being an advocate uh, for your client to being a neutral somebody who is facilitating a settlement as opposed to arguing to win with your position. And that does take practice. So uh, it's important to get used to actively listening, uh, to understand the party's real motivations, their interests and positions. And uh, settling is an art form. It's different than you uh, arguing to win a motion or in a trial. So it's a different skill set that you will need, but most importantly, uh, we in the Superior Court, uh, uh, along with Judge Cowan and our presiding Judge Taylor, want to make sure that you have a successful, you have a wonderful experience in this virtual setting. Uh, we have been doing, when I say we, the settlement uh, judges here in the court, have been using Zoom and has proven to be quite effective in settlement, uh, settling cases, uh, despite the fact that we don't have the, uh, the personal touch. In order for you to get some of these new skills that you're going to use in settling, I know it's going to be difficult in trying to get in between now and then, but may I suggest that you go to a uh, the resource list that is going to be posted here, uh, which the Pepperdine Law School just authorized me to distribute to you. This list has uh, helpful TED Talks, has a podcast, books, articles, things for you to read so that you can become an effective settlement officer. Um, I'm going to be discussing also very briefly the tools to use for breaking an impasse. Two hours, two and a half hours into the settlement uh, discussion that you're going to have the party says, well, we just seem to be in an impasse. We're just going to call it quits. My big tip is, of course, do not call it quits. You must be persistent. And there are some tools that I will be discussing briefly now. Uh, and then later on, I understand there will be another training session on how to break that impasse. Just a couple of tips. You have to encourage creative solutions to resolve the case, such as payment plans, annuities, even an apology. So think outside the box so that as settlement officers, you can assist the parties coming into their, their settlement agreement because it is their settlement agreement. You are just facilitating that. Another tip that I've used often and it helps depending on the situation is have the parties or the tenants take a, a little break, a cool off break to rethink their positions. That is often fairly helpful. And if necessary, and if the attorneys representing the clients approve, give an evaluative approach. Uh, that you have to do very carefully. You have to analyze the strengths and weaknesses. And if you think it's appropriate, you may give that evaluative approach after speaking to the, to the attorneys. Also, as you know, there are a lot of uh, impasse tools, uh, brackets, mediators, proposals. I can spend a whole day on mediators proposals, but I'm not going to today. But those are all very useful tips that must be used very wisely at the right time, in the right context, so that you can help the parties come to a resolution. Um, a couple of tips for the attorneys representing the clients is also to prepare your client before the MSC, explain to them what the process is. What is the role of the settlement officer? Clients often expect for me as a judge to tell them, am I gonna win, am I gonna lose? What do you think? Uh, I think it's important that you uh, prepare your clients that the role of the settlement officer, which is not to give you a ruling on a motion in limine, but to simply facilitate the agreement. Uh, and of course, we have a, prepared a wonderful video uh, by our uh, supervising judge of the settlement unit, uh, Judge Sananian, and the attorneys uh, and the settlement officers will be required to play this video, and that will be very helpful to prepare your client, to explain the process, so that the clients and the attorneys come into the settlement conference prepared, 
understanding who's going to do what, how it's going to work. And, you know, they love watching videos. So this video from Judge Sinanian will be very helpful. Make sure you watch it. And it is on the Resolve LA Law website. I believe it's under the parties uh, tab. So make sure that you watch that. Um, I would, as I said, I could go on and on giving you a lot of different tips, but I'm going to stop now because we are running out of time. And I will also be sharing with the providers here the list of resources, as I said, that Pepperdine Law School authorized me to release so that you can, at your leisure, look at TED Talks and podcasts and how to be an effective settlement officer. With that, thank you so much. I want to really give my deep thanks to everybody who's going to volunteer. We really appreciate it from behalf of all of the judges in the Superior Court. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Judge Lyons. That was terrific. And um, I definitely commend to everybody uh, going and watching Judge Sinanian's video. The idea is, uh, is a fantastic video. And the idea is a video for um, the parties to watch uh, along the lines of, or inspired by the video that we would, that jurors would see in the jury assembly room, just telling people, the parties about what the MSC is and, and the, the, the merits of an MSC. Um, and so I also want to let it, before I just turn it over to Marta, one thing I wanted to bring up, and Jose, I don't know if you can show this. I forgot to show everybody and I apologize for this, but I forgot to show everybody the um, fact that we have settlement documents available for um, the parties and their attorneys on the website as well. And that's under the settlement officer or the party dashboard. Um, we may have lost Jose to a lunch break, which is fine because they're following the law. Uh, here he is. <laughs> Thank <laughs> All right. you. Thanks, Jose. Okay, so under the dashboard here, this is gonna be available both to settlement officers and attorneys. We've got the settlement documents, which are form basic documents um, that you can download and use uh, in the event of a settlement. You're going to, you don't upload your, dog, your settlement documents to the program. Obviously your settlement documents are you know, executed between the parties and if you do settle, you do need to let the court know as soon as possible via notice of settlement, et cetera. And we do have the 664.6 stipulation as an exhibit to the settlement agreement. So I just wanna bring your attention to that. Thank you very much, I'm sorry. And uh, I'll hand that back over to Marta. Just, and just a couple other quick thoughts. Also available is a settlement office uh, survey that, they could, that the settlement officers should complete post MSC after the conference to let, um, the, let us know whether or not the case settled and some other questions that will be helpful to the, you know, to uh, uh, our program to kind of further refine it. And the courts will be looking at those uh, numbers too. But for example, you know, we wanna know if the case settles so we can, uh, you know, advertise our success rate. So please, um, you'll see that on the, and there, um, there you have it. Um, that is the what the settlement officers, thank you, Jose, will be completing after the MSC and submitting that so we can have some raw data to help us either for, fully uh, uh, refine it, the program, or you know, just have the data whether or not the case settled and some other information. So thank you for that. And I also want to just briefly mention that Judge Lyons has volunteered her wonderful services in a follow-up um, webinar that we're going to host. Uh, and then we're gonna make it available for the registered settlement officers for this program. So that would be members of um, CALA, ASCDC, LA Aboda, and the Beverly Hills Bar Association. Those are the settlement officers that have 10, or year, 10 years or more of experience that can sign up um, to attend this uh, you know, webinar. And Judge Lyons is gonna give everybody tips about how to work as a settlement officer and how to kind of get people past those you know, those stumbling blocks and try to get everybody to, uh, you know, resolve their case. So we're excited about that and stay tuned for further information. And Belinda dropped into the chat, um, the pre-registration link. So you can go in and, you know, sign up for that now, if you would like. Exactly. And Lance, so now, now we'll yeah, turn it back over to Judge Crowley to give him, him thoughts as a PI hub judge. All right, so let me talk about the types of cases that get sent into this program. Judge Cowan talked earlier about these are cases where 
it's one plaintiff versus one defendant. Let me let me fuzz that uh, definition a little bit. So if you basically have two sides to the case, one attorney on each side. So if you have a the, the plaintiff is suing both the driver and the owner of the vehicle, we're going to consider that a two party case or the plaintiff is suing both the employer and the employee who was driving and the employees in the course and scope. We're going to consider that a two party case, even though there may technically be three parties. Um, we're only going to send you to the program if you're trial ready. I noticed somebody in the chat said, well, it, sending it out at the FSC is too late because you've already spent all of this money getting ready for trial. The reason we've elected to wait until the final status conference is there's something that happens when you get ready for trial that causes you to understand your case and to put you in a position to settle it. If, we're, if you want to settle it before you spend the money on experts, you can either go to mediation or you can pick up the phone and call the other side and try to settle the case. But for the purposes of this program, since we're using volunteer lawyers and we wanna use their time effectively, we don't wanna send them cases where people go in and say, oh, I don't know, I really haven't thought about that yet. Uh, we're not gonna waste those people's time. So that's why you have to be trial ready. So when you get to the FSC, all of your documents need to be there. Everything has to be thought through. Um, you're, I want you ready to go in two weeks. Um, so then at, at that point, I will send you to the MSC program and I'll also continue your trial out 60 days so that we can get the MSC done. Now, if all of you start signing up to be uh, volunteer settlement officers, and we are able to double track, say have two MSCs in the morning and two in the afternoon, or even triple track. As I understand, the, the, the foundation of the system allows it to be expanded uh, infinitely, correct? We could have 100 in the morning and 100 in the afternoon, Marta? Right now, we're, we're set for five in the morning and five in the afternoon every day, except for court holidays and weekends, obviously. All right. So if you guys all sign up, then I may not need to continue the trial 60 days to, accomplish, to, uh, to accommodate your MSC. We may be able to get you an MSC the next day or a week later, or sometime within the two week gap that we're setting between FSCs and, and trials now. Um, one of the things I really wanted to talk about is why I'm so excited about the program and, and the benefits that I see of the program. Um, one of the main benefits of the program is the service that uh, the program serves to the court. Right now, each of us in the PI Hub has about 9,000 cases. We each set 25 cases a day for trial. So there's five times 25 feeding into department one. Now we know those aren't all gonna go, but with the backlog because they're being closed during COVID and then cases just not resolving because they haven't been able to go to trial during COVID, we have a lot of cases and a lot of cases beget a lot of work uh, and it screws up the whole, the whole works. So right now I'm setting trials in August of 2022. Um, if we can get cases moving through this settlement program, that time lag is gonna shorten. And if we get rid of cases, then the slots available for things like motions to compel and uh, 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 MSJs and, and things like that will all free up. So that's that's one is the benefit to the court. I think there's also a benefit to you as attorneys to sign up for the program. And it kind of along the lines of what jo Judge Lyons was talking about earlier. Being a settlement officer requires a different skill set. And you you will look at your case, you will look at that case that you're settling a little bit differently than if you were litigating it. And I think as you uh, operate or act as a settlement officer more and more, you will develop a, a sense of being able to step back from your cases and look at them. How is somebody else gonna see this case? And it will, it will cause you to be a, a better evaluator of your case. It will also hone your mediation skills because you'll sort of learn what works and, and what doesn't work. You know, more importantly though, you'll, you'll, you'll come away with a sense of purpose doing this. It'll, it'll add that, that sort of uh, color to your professional career that you're, you're doing something that's worthwhile besides answering interrogatories and making objections and depositions. 
um, and it'll it'll make you feel better about what you're doing. Um, and on the last point, it, it will there's a benefit to the bar from participating in this program. One of my favorite things in doing this before COVID was getting to meet lawyers on the other side of the V. And, and I've made some very good friends with lawyers on the other side of the V from doing this program. And I, I think the more we do it and the more you of the bar do it and get to meet people on the other side, we'll start to knit the, the bar together. And I think we'll see increased civility as a result because now you know this person um, and which will, result in reduced law and motion practice, and it'll all be wonderful. So get out there and sign up now. <laughs> Thank you, Judge Crowley. Belinda, are there other questions that we can answer um, for any of the attendees that we haven't? I know we've been going through and answering questions along the way. Um, and I do, I do want to mention that um, the, I guess the active email right now is info at resolvelawla.com if you have questions or um, problems. And we're actually also activating help at resolvelawla.com too. You're seeing the sausage get made live. <laughs> <laughs> These are the kinds of things we do all day, every day about, uh, about this program and with the program is to try to make it as intuitive, helpful, and user-friendly for all of you as we possibly can, right, Marta? Exactly. And, and just this morning, I, you know, I talked to uh, an attorney that uh, his case was ordered into the program uh, last week, and I actually was speaking with him last on Friday, and he said, "Well, I'm an Aboda member. You know, I know this is my case, but can I serve as a settlement officer?" And I said, "Absolutely, go register." And be, because he had already registered as an attorney for a party, he had to, um, you, you know, he questioned, well, how do I do it? And if you have already registered um, yourself as either a settlement officer, but you also could be a, an attorney for a party because you regularly practice within the PI hub and you have potential cases that could be ordered into it, send an email right now to info at resolvelawla.com and the the um, wonderful folks um, at, at P PESC will get you set up so you could be uh, uh, serving both capacities. I saw also in the chat, Gary Stern said that he was able to use a secondary email address. You can do that as well, but you know we are still, again, refining the process and that those that those little kinks may be able to work out on the back end, but right now that's what you're going to have to do. Right, and I do want to draw everybody's attention to again, if you haven't gone through the three step process um, to volunteer as a settlement officer, if you haven't yet registered yourself, um, and there are quite a few of you for active duty, if you haven't, um, then you need to go back into the system and register yourself for active duty to volunteer on a specific date and time. Um, although we have 129 settlement officers registered, only 38 have input their availability. 91 of the registered settlement officers um, before this program had not yet uh, uh, selected their availability to serve as settlement officers. So the system doesn't select that for you. You select it for yourself and you need to go back in and select the dates and times that you're available to act as a settlement officer. Um, so we can get you on the books and uh, some, some MSCs can, some cases can get settled through your excellent expertise. Let me, and uh, right uh, now, yeah, yes, I'm go ahead. Add, you know, following up, Jeannie, on your point that please take that, make that plunge today, sign up for that first program. Do, do me one favor, just do it, do it once, get it in, do it. You know that you're going to, uh, it's going to, it's going to make a huge difference professionally to the court, to your clients. I know it sounds maybe, hopefully I don't sound too rote, but I really do mean it, that it, right now, as, as just Taylor has indicated, we're at a critical part, we're at a critical time, you know, as we come out of COVID and it's so essential how this is program. So I really, again, thank you for, for taking, that, taking that plunge if you can and getting this, um, getting this moving. And Judge Taylor wants to say something now as well. Yeah, just, just quickly, you know, it, it, Having resolved a number of cases myself over 23 whatever years, I remember the first few times 
it was it was so fulfilling and it's a valuable skill set to have it really is i mean it'll take you way further in your career um, just understanding that and getting a reputation for it who knows what you know who knows what comes of that at some point but it's such a valuable skill uh to be able to help people resolve uh, resolve their matters so it, from a selfish perspective just do this <laughs> Yes, please do. And we will also, um, in addition to hopefully you go in and, and schedule your available dates to act as a settlement officer yourselves for all of those um, online here, we will also send some follow-up emails reminding people to do that for those who have not yet volunteered. But we need you to take responsibility for getting this done for yourselves as well. Um, and the more settlement officers we have volunteering, the more cases we can get done in the system as quickly as possible. Uh, it's gonna be exciting to be able to report on the uh, resolution, uh, uh, the resolution numbers and the stats. And um, so in addition, we have mentioned potentially being able to scale this at some point um, into other cases outside of the PI hub. And that is something that we do hope to be able to do along the lines of the crash programs that the Los Angeles Superior Court has so successfully had in years past. We know there's a need in other case types as well, but we just need all of you to get on and help with this initial round of cases so we can figure out um, what do we need to fix? How do we need to make it better? How does this work? Um, we are all in this together. The program is going to be successful. We really appreciate your patience and understanding and feedback. We have worked very hard to get this program to this point, and we're really excited to help as many people out there in the legal community as we possibly can. And you're going to be part of that. You're the most important part. So, right. Um, right. Yes. And this, well, the reason why the original program was so successful was because <clears throat> the settlement officers dedicated the time and the effort and really got behind the program to support it. And we really need that now here as well. And, you know, if to the, to the people that are participating in this webinar, you know, go knock, knock on your neighbor's door in, your, in their office or call them if they're working from home and ask them to sign up to be a settlement officer. Let's spread the word. Let's get it. Let's, let's spread the word about this program and let's make it a success. And it can and will happen. And you guys are the most important part. Thank and you. And on that, uh, yes. And on that point, sorry to jump in, but um, we lawyers are a competitive bunch. And I want to let you know that Resolve Law San Diego had 250 volunteers. So coming into this program we had today, we had 129 in the first week, which is exceptional. And that 250 settlement officer volunteer number was, you know, later on in Resolve, Resolve Law San Diego's program, but we need to beat San Diego, okay? I'll, I'll so, join in that offici officially. <laughs> great on so many levels great and we and you know and we also have the great uh, you know attorneys and at, uh, at the beverly hills bar association that are de dedicating their time and efforts to this you know and we're really excited to have them as an addition to this program and this virtual program it's really going to be great yes and my my last point on this is there is no other program like this um, in the country that we've been able to find it is unique to LA. And even though there was a different program in San Diego, it did not involve the San Diego Superior Court. Okay. So what is so unique about this program is that the Los Angeles uh, County Superior Court is so directly involved and as, as a result of the prior in-person program. And so it's unique. This is an opportunity that we in LA have that nobody else has. So let's make this successful. And thank you so much to all. Um, thank you. And before we go, the, the old program was great. This program is phenomenal. And it's thanks to you guys. So thanks to everybody. Thank you all. Thank, thank you, you to all everybody. for joining today. Use the program. <laughs>